Hello and welcome to Nutside Scenics. In this video I'm reviewing the Algo Laser Alpha 22W Laser Engraver. In the marketing materials they're advertising that this is the strongest 22W engraving machine currently available. This is due to the adoption of advanced second generation COS technology and polarised beam combination. This improves the performance of the laser beam by 40%. I've never used a laser cutter before so this is quite a good test to see how simple it is to set up. In the top layer of the box there is a user manual, a box of consumables and a 3mm piece of ply. The next layer of the box has the front and back of the machine plus some other bits and pieces which I'll show you in a moment. And the final layer has the sides and the centrepiece. The air pump is housed in its own box. The size of the machine is approximately 60cm by 68cm and has a working area of 40cm by 40cm. And now to run through the accessories in the box. We have a power supply, a pair of safety glasses, a toolkit which gives you the tools and the parts to assemble the machine, some replacement lenses, and a USB cable to connect to your PC. The air pump box includes the necessary cable and the air hose. The orange box includes the user manual and the certificates of conformity. Some test materials like this 3mm plywood are included in the box. There are also some aluminium business cards and some 3mm acrylic. This is the front section with the control buttons and motherboard. The side, centre and the laser unit are already wired together. Once the front and the side are clicked together there are three screws to hold it in place. Instead of using my own tools I used the ones provided. This was to ensure it included all the tools required. This cable tie needed to be removed as it was just there while the machine was in transit. Three screws are used on each corner before the machine is turned over so the cable can be connected to the motor. When I turned the machine back over I made a slight error as the cable should run underneath the side rather than over it. This was easily rectified later on. The centre section or x-axis assembly is attached with two screws at either side. When that's done the cable can be attached. The laser unit is attached to the x-axis by using the quick release lever. and then the air hose can be inserted into the top of the laser unit. This bit's quite fiddly but the two cables need to be inserted into the motherboard. Once the power cable and the air hose are clipped into the cable tidies I can turn my attention to the motor extension shaft. It's simply a case of attaching it with the couplings provided and then tightening with the allen key. There are three belts on the machine which all need to be suitably tightened. As a guide the instructions say this means the laser module can move smoothly. I saw a video on YouTube which mentioned that the x-axis was hitting this bolt. The solution offered was to move the screw to the hole next to it. However, this is more likely to be a belt tightening issue so it's worth spending a bit of time on the setup. I was quite fortunate to have a spare baseboard for the Algo laser to sit on. It's essential to have a solid platform as a base due to the nature of the machine and the multiple movements it makes. For software I chose Lightburn but there are some other options out there. Lightburn offers a free 30 day trial and then is approximately £50 to buy if you decide to stick with it. I won't go into Lightburn too much as I'm very new to it myself but they do have a very good YouTube page which I'd recommend looking at. The machine doesn't include a cutting board but I would recommend getting one for cleaner cuts and for safety. I picked up this board from Amazon and it just helps the air to flow underneath the material you're cutting. This also means that your cuts should be cleaner and there'll be less burn marks. 
At the time of recording, it wasn't possible to buy one from Algolaser, but it looks like it'll be available very soon. One of the great features of the machine is when it's connected to Lightburn, it can control the air pump depending on the job you're doing. The air hose from the machine is joined to the air pump with this simple connection. When that's done, you can connect the USB cable to your PC, the air pump cable and the power. The front of the machine has a power button, a set of keys so it can be locked, and an emergency stop button. Although the air is controlled through light burn, you also have the option of turning it up or down using the air volume switch. One of the other features mentioned in the marketing materials is the dual core CPU, which improves loading times and efficiency. It has expanded storage so there's plenty of room for future firmware upgrades. I had a few issues with the firmware upgrade on my Mac, but skill from support was very helpful and soon got me up and running again. There are several videos on the AlgoLazy YouTube channel, so I'd recommend having a look at those. When the machine is turned on, it moves to the home position, which I've set as front left. This leaves the space to add your material. The frame function does a quick dummy run to ensure your material is in the right place. With the material in place, you need to push down the focus stick, unlock the quick release lever so the laser is in the right position, lock the lever, and then press the button to release the focus stick. Although it's quite nice to experiment with these things, there are recommended settings on the Algo Laser website. There are settings for wood, acrylic, and other materials such as leather, card, and steel. As a quick test on this 3mm ply, I decided to create a coaster from my logo. The important thing I forgot to do was to change the cut settings around the edge. Due to my mistake it didn't cut all the way through but it's something I can correct next time. This machine also has the facility to engrave over 500 shades of colour onto stainless steel. Rather than create my own file I popped onto the Facebook user group to see what was available. I found a shield file created by Algolaser which was perfect for testing. In Lightburn you can see a preview of the file and also how long it will take. When I was happy and I'd set the material focus on the laser, I clicked start. The colours are created by oxidation of the steel and this is something I think I'll look forward to using in future. Another engraving project was this olive wood coaster I picked up from my local market. This is a beautiful wood to work with and I was really happy with the result. There were three aluminium business cards included in the pack, so I decided to engrave my logo on one of them. You can also engrave images, so I took a photo of one of our pet rabbits looking rather relaxed. The surface of this plywood is quite rough, so it's probably not the best material for images. I followed this up by engraving the same image on some 1.5mm card. This machine has the power to cut through a number of materials in one pass. I didn't have all of these specific materials mentioned in the literature, 
However, I did have a large number of other materials to put it through its paces. Over time, I'll be able to experiment with these settings with more power and less speed and vice versa. It happily cut through all the pieces of wood I put on the board, so the next material to try was acrylic. In summary, this machine was really good fun to use. If you do buy the machine, you need to consider buying a cutting mat and the light burn software, which is approximately £100 on top of the price you pay. The main positive for me is the fact that it opens up so many possibilities. If you'd like more information on the machine, please look at the links in the description. Thanks for watching.